ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶ ಶಾರದ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ರಾಮಾಯ ರಾಮಭದ್ರಾಯ ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ವೇಧಸಿ ರಘುನಾಥಾಯ ನಾಥಾಯ ಸೀತಾಯ ಪತಗೇ ನಮಃ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆನ್ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಟು ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಫೈವ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಿಶ್ಕಿನ್ ಧಾಕಾಂಡ ಇನ್ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವೀಸಾ ಆಂಜನೇಯ ಆರ್ ಹನುಮಾನ್ ಕೇರ್ಫುಲಿ ಚೆಕಿಂಗ್ ಔಟ್ ಹೂ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ರಾಮ ಅಂಡ್ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಣ ಆರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವೈ ದೇ ಕೇಮ್ ಟು ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಣ ಕೇರ್ಫುಲಿ ಡೈವಲ್ಜಿಂಗ್ ದೇರ್ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ಸ್ ಟು ಹಿಮ್ as much that is sufficient for him and on receiving the details knowing that they were exer on an exile into the forest being thrown out of their kingdom what for whatever is the reason and he hanuman also narrates how exactly sugriva is also his master is also in a is in a similar distress being thrown out of the kingdom with his wife being abjected so they both are people following facing the same difficulties and certainly would make a good partnership from the rishimoka mountain hanuman bounded to the mount malaya after bringing rama and lakshmana to the rishimoka mountain hanuman went to the mount malaya and presenting the two valiant descendants of raghu to sukriva he said this is rama O great and wise king who has come here with Lakshmana his brother the true hero born in the dynasty of Ikshvaku is the son of king Dasharatha fixed in his duty he is carrying out the behests of his father a great king who gratifying the deity of fire agni with rajasuya and ashwamedha sacrifices at those times distributed hundreds and thousands of cows in charity on account of a woman his son rama who is present here was exiled to the forest and while that magnanimous hero was dwelling there practicing asceticism ravana carried off his consort he now seeks your protection in fact in the beginning in the last chapter we didn't see lakshmana giving hanuman all this detail probably while they were scaling the rishimoka mountain slowly hanuman must have strengthened his friendship with rama and lakshmana and lakshmana would have given him much more details these two brothers rama and lakshmana solicit your friendship do yourself receive these heroes worthy of homage with honor hearing these words of hanuman sugriva the king of the monkeys who had now become easy of access said to rama this is a great fortune and the greatest of gains for me o lord that you desire to ally yourself in friendship with me who am one of the monkey of the wanara tribe should that friendship find favor with you then here is my hand take it unto yours and let us bind ourselves fast with a vow This is how exactly Sugriva now with all his humility he extended his hand for friendship of Rama so that he can well receive and make a good friendship with him Hearing Sugriva's sweet words Rama with a joyful heart clasped his hand and happy in the thought of when the alliance they were about to conclude embraced him warmly Rama seeing the humility of Sugriva the next act that he did was to embrace Sugriva which will permanently make it a great friendship between the two great heroes then Hanuman the subduer of his enemies who had put off his monk monk's guise assuming his own shape kindled a fire by rubbing two pieces of wood together if you observe in the last chapter itself we have seen Now Hanuman had given up his guise as an ascetic among the monks guise and he took his true form while bringing Rama and Lakshmana to Rishimoka mountain that is basically to assure Rama and Lakshmana but of course initially with the command of Sugriva he went to Rama and Lakshmana in the guise of a monk probably when he went back to Sugriva he again took the same guise to give an assurance to sugriva that everything has not been changed he did not divulge himself who he is but then once he saw that sugriva has accepted the friendship of rama now there is no need of a guise 
so he had given up his monk's guise and now he is creating the fire at that spot this again is another sanatana tradition that whenever any great aspect need to be done if it is done in the presence of fire which is called as agni sakshi in the presence of fire whether it is a friendship or whether it is a marriage between a boy and a girl if it is done in the presence of a marriage if if it is done in the presence of the fire because in the whole world everything can be contaminated water can be food can be easily contaminated even water can be contaminated even air can be contaminated but the only thing that cannot be contaminated is the fire which always remain in its purest form so here the presence of fire indicate that our friendship or our relation will going to be there forever and it remains pure and perfect like the fire itself it is because of that reason a boy and a girl who get married they always get married in the presence of a fire and to ensure themselves that they continue to remain straight forward without hiding anything between themselves the fire being lit and the flowers cast into it thus preparing it it plays he placed it between them between sugriva and rama full of joy and devotion going round it they both were going round that fire both rama and sugriva who worshiped the fire and thus sugriva and rama were united in friendship whereupon the hearts of the monkey the hearts of the vanara and the rama were merry and gazing upon each other they were unable to have their fill you are now the friend of my heart in joy and pain and we are one thus spoke rukshugriva in his satisfaction as also rama and breaking off a branch from the sala tree abandoned adorned with leaves and covered with flowers sugriva laid it down as it were a carpet and with rama sat down upon it while the delighted hanuman born of maruta in his turn offered lakshmana a branch of blossoming sandalwood thereafter full of happiness sugriva his eyes wide with delight said to rama in sweet and gentle tones cruelly persecuted o rama i came here in great fear my consort having been wrested from me and in deep distress i took refuge in this inaccessible part of the forest where i now dwell my mind distracted with terror my brother oppresses me and is my enemy o rama o great hero do yourself deliver me from the fear which wali inspires in me act o kakusta in such a way that any courage may be restored here if you observe sugriva never says to never tells rama directly you go and kill my brother instead of that he says that he had instilled wali has instilled the fear in him so do act yourself to take out that fear in me at these words the illustrious and virtuous rama a lover of justice smiling answered sugriva saying i know well that the fruit of friendship is mutual aid o great vanara i shall slay that wali who has carried off your consort these pointed shafts that you perceive these arrows bright as the sun fly straight to their target decorated with haran's feather and resembling indra's thunderbolt skillfully wrought their points sharpened resembling provoked serpents they will pierce that perverse wretch with force today you shall see wali fall on earth like a cleft mountain struck by these pointed darts resembling venomous snakes probably while uttering these words rama also must be observing sugriva and that's why rama straight come to the point only way the fear can be taken out is by directly killing wali expecting to see whether if sugriva is not interested in that 
is not interested in getting that death, getting death blow for his brother, then he would have immediately stopped Rama. But if you observe the following feelings of Sugriva, encouraged by Rama's words, Sugriva, overjoyed, spoke again, saying, May I, by your grace, O valiant lion among men, regain my concert and my kingdom, O king. Do yourself restrain my wicked older brother, elder brother from harming me hereafter. Here again, Sugriva never tells Rama to kill him, but he expresses overjoys. He is happy that he will go to regain his kingdom. He will go to get back his wife. And that is a clear indication. One need not have to put everything in terms of the words and their expressions, feelings will speak a lot. In fact, the non-verbal communications make up more than 70% of our real communication, whereas the words will make hardly 20-30% to 30 of our communication. At the moment when Sugriva and Rama concluded their alliance, Sita's left eye resembling a lotus twitched, as also did that of the Indra of monkeys, that is Wali, which resembled gold and that of the titan Ravana, which was like a flame. But if you observe the background of this, Sita being a female, being a woman with her left eye twitching is a sign of good thing happening for her. That is the friendship of Rama and Sugriva. Whereas for a man like Wali or Ravana, with the left eye twitched is a sign of a bad omen it is going to bring bad luck for both Bali, Bali and Ravana. Thus ended Chapter 5 of Kishkindha Kanda in Ramayana. Namaste Sharada Devi, Ashmira Puravasini, Tvamaham Prarthage Nityam, Vidya Dhananchadehime. Goodbye.